That's right. I'm Potty. And I'm Rye Hogwall. And this is, this is US FAP. Let's go. Lagging. <laughs> what is up? It, is it lagging for you? No, no. I was just moving in slow motion there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, this is episode 20 of our show. Episode 420. Let's go, baby. Yeah, that's right. Season 4, or I think it's season 9, so kind of missed the boat on that one. But, um, you know, big week that we had, week 3, coming down to the wires. Uh, anything you want to cover, or should we get right into the games? Let's dive in. Let's dive in. So in our first matchup over here, we had the uh, Arizona Rattlers take it on the Tacoma Eruption. And in this first place, first play of the game, uh, you can see, well, not the first play of the game, but the first highlight we've got, you can see the tone was set very early on with James Peach registering a big old touchdown. Wow, look, that one looked like it would have been called back anyway. Uh, or they must have declined the penalty because it did look like there was an offsides there. So even more impressive. And shout out to Tacoma for the reserved field graphics here. I remember the last time we saw them play at home, it looked like a literal bloodbath on the field because it was all red. Yeah, I guess they maybe switch up their uh, their plays every day. But that one was a uh, one to or their fields, you know, between games. That one going to James Peach as well. Um, and Arizona, you know, being down zero to eleven really had to respond and they did so in an uncompelling way as they fumble it right when he's running in wow. so Jacob Copeland with the fumble recovery from Tacoma. Love to see a good defensive play out on these once in a while. Yes. Well, we've got some offense for you as well. This one going to none other than Joe Beasley. What a rocket across the field. Um, I don't know how many yards that was, but it was over 50. So shout out to Joe Beasley. Wow, the, the ash from that touchdown pass will probably keep planes grounded as far as North America. Oh, absolutely. And we have another air bomb for you coming in. This one going to none other. Check this one out. This one had even greater hang time. This one going oh to uh, James Peach with another touchdown. I think that might have been the third of the evening for him. James and the giant Peach. Giant Peach, but you wanted some defensive plays, so let's get back to Arizona on offense. We can take a little snippet here. They're down 28 to 0, and they throw an interception to Rose O'Neill. Oh, oh, that is tough. That Watching that makes me need a glass of Rose. Yeah. Which, uh, doesn't a rapper Do you think own it's... Rose? Or is that Ricky Rose? Ricky Rosé. I don't. Does he own all of Rosé? Is Rosé a region in France or some shit? I don't yeah. know. Oh yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, Rick Ross owns Rosé. Rick Ross basically owns wine. Yeah, wine is a whole. Um, that as one a commodity. Joe Beasley finding the hole um, in the uh, defensive line as he runs in for a touchdown, and this setup. Joe is Beasley the... finding the right hole that time. She's yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And air, you know Tacoma, you know throwing one another deep one. This one going to Sean McGowan, um, or uh, no, that was Joe Beasley. Oh, I'm sorry. The other one is David Brewster, who was the rookie with his touchdown. That one going to Joe Beasley, the wide receiver. Yeah, so I I knew Beasley usually gets deeper. Yes, uh, this one Arizona saying you know we might get shut out, but it's you know nine minutes left in the fourth, so. They're over here sending this go, one Arizona. to Sean McGowan. A lot of big plays in this game. Fun to watch. Yes, big plays. And, Especially if you're a Tacoma fan. And uh, this one, maybe not the biggest because they were already down 41-7, to but I think this displayed some character to Arizona and putting in another touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, they, they never give up. They can't. They're robots. They are robots. They're not even robots. They're just AI. Yeah, they're just programmed to... They're not even keep... real, or are they? Maybe I... we're the, the simulated ones, and they're the real ones. Yeah, that could be an interesting twist. You know, kind of like the inverse of one another. Just as the scores are the inverse of one another, 14 to 41, the mirror image, if you were to place it right down the middle. Wow. Observant. So, when it came down to the second game, this one... Facing off in Anchorage, we had Huntington Beach t 
taking on the Snow Devils. Anchorage, one of my favorite teams to watch simply because they're from Alaska and it's cold at AF. And they were oh. pretty cold himself. That was Jar Martinez with the interception, setting uh, you know a precedent for the plays to move forward. Unfortunately, Anchorage only walked away with a field goal. So Huntington Beach from the 50-yard line, this one a deep dot wow. up to Ryan Davis with the touchdown. Can't defend that. Went as far as he possibly could have gone and whip while still staying in bounds. HBV. Look, they even did the booth review. It always stands. Always it's simulated. Stands. They don't make mistakes. No, and that wasn't the first we were going to see a Ryan Davis is a, uh, you know, uh, they were still up only seven to three. This one going to Ryan Davis for a touchdown. You know, you you do wonder how the challenges work. Like, what's the algorithm behind the challenges? Like, the refs are supposed to get something right, like what, nine hundred and ninety times out of a thousand, and then that you've got the challenges for that one one hundredth or whatever. Yeah, I use challenges a lot myself when I play Madden. Rarely, if ever, do I win them, but it has happened which means the AI is fallible. It is fallible. And uh, it's interesting. Like It's like it's programmed basically to be wrong, and then there's a chance that somebody will call it wrong, and then there'll be a, another chance if it was actually wrong. So, well, Sorry, HBV, that your game is being overshadowed by the fact that AI might take over the world Yes. once well, it figures out how to get the play calls right. Exactly. Well, of the play calls, the ones I missed, that was Gina Buckley with a sack. Gina is a you know a rookie off in Huntington Beach. As Huntington Beach walked away with this victory, 14-3, to holding the Snow Devils to only a three-pronged approach. Um, you know, all three of those points that they scored, which took us to our third game here out in Dallas. We had the Toronto Wraiths taking on the Dragons. And the Dragons wow. were down three points pretty uh, deep into the first. And they were at the red zone ready to rock and roll as this one um, flew out to Fowler, Isaiah Fowler, with the touchdown. Well, the, the Dragons looking like a glow stick at a rave. Yes. Lots of uh, fluorescence in the air and the wraiths, you know, holding it down in their orange unis. Not, um, I don't know, I think they need a darker color to compete with or something, but they do have part of it ready for Halloween. This one going to Darren Eliasson with the touchdown for Toronto. Yeah, you love to see the muted colors score a few points. Yes. Um, and it was uh, pretty much you know tied up here, 10-10, second quarter, and uh, almost about to expire. And this one, Toronto with the ball, going to JoJo Tidwell Jr. with the touchdown. Wow, just like his daddy. Just like his daddy. Um, and it was Toronto's ball again, this time on around the 25-yard line. They hit none other than Austin Wilson, who ran this one up all the way down. That's a you know, 60, 70-yard drive or, you know, whatever. But uh, pretty impressive play right there. You know, for a new team, I got to wonder, what are the rate doing? that the Mafia are not. They have... Uh, they're probably snitching. Yeah, they probably they're working snitching. working with the cops. Yeah, or like something. Jack Nicholson and the Departed. I think, uh, I think they also have a good, strong leadership at their helm. Um, oh, the FBI. Yeah, Jay, this one was Ulf Jacobson with the touchdown. Ulf Jacobson, my favorite Viking era running back. Yes. And then we had, you know, 27 to 22, 11 seconds on the clock. Dallas needed to score. And they got this one to Jerry Riggs. And Jerry that, Riggs always always finds a way to put something together. Mm-hmm. Master craftsman. I definitely thought, I definitely thought the rates were going to pull that one out, to be honest with you. But it makes me feel a little bit better about the Mafia taking another L that the rates took one so misery does love company rates welcome to our help welcome here we're uh yeah, taking visitors but once we get out of that hole we'll be climbing to the top of the tower as we start off with St. Louis taking on Tampa Bay 
um, Typhoon. This one going to Earl <clears throat> Flint. Deep Bob. Earl Flint. Just made some fire. Yeah, making fire with that friction in the force, which put the Typhoon ahead 7-3, to three, but St. Louis, you know, wasn't uh, about to let that happen, so they dropped back at the 20-yard line, get ready to hurl one out. Oh, the play and, action. Oh, Chris Davis with the interception from Tampa Bay. Wow. Looks like he had a guy wide open, 83 on the right there, but made a bad call. Yeah. Poor decision making. Either way, the Archers then got back into the red zone in the second. Um, the score was still 3-7. And this one going to Harris Glass, uh, rookie in the, uh, out here in St. Louis. Uh, what great situation for Paris Glass to walk in there at St. Louis. There's like some city in Italy? Florence, maybe? No, it's or... France. Paris is the capital of France, party. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking of another city where they sold glass. Oh. Like... Oh, and th this one we have an interception from Christopher Baker. Make me a cake just as fast as you can. Yeah, well, they were rolling and pulling ahead with the 13-7 lead until this one got passed off in motion off to Kevin Lee. Great drop on that play. Wow, great job to put in the ball in a place where the receiver can catch it and isn't going to get clobbered by three <laughs> different players at once. Not that it matters, but... Yeah, you know, he was thinking for his team Kudos. on that one. Um. And it was 19 to 10, and Tampa Bay was, you know, trying to sprint ahead. This one going to uh, Jacory Dash with the touchdown, as they brought the score even closer, 19 to 17. But the Archers had the ball. There's a minute left in the first or the fourth quarter, and went other to nobody except Navy McNamerson, who Amy. took it home with the touchdown. I knew we couldn't go the whole game without calling out Namie's name. He, oh, look at he that. is the Namiest. What, what does he call that dance? Do we know? I don't know. The toy robot? The toy robot. So the Archers walked away with the 26 to 17 lead. So in nine points, it could have been tied up with a touchdown and a field goal uh, to win it. But it's uh, not the way it went down. So, yeah, I feel like we should have some music playing behind us the next time we do this. And in particular, I think it should be the music that you that plays when you have a battle in, like, Pokemon Red or Blue. Okay. You think we can get sued for that? I don't know if we'd get sued, but we, we when whenever this blows up and we want to monetize it, you know, they would not allow us to get any ad revenue, so. Okay, well... I heard that Jay-Z took no publishing on Hard Knock Life because it was a great hit. No publishing. That's pretty hot. And maybe that's the play. Well, this one was going to, in the last play, Cam Mello with the touchdown, the first for New York, as they took the early lead. Um, remember, New Jersey had scored two field goals, and New York had honed in. Now this one with another one going to, 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 to Kataki Dracos um, with the touchdown for the Mafia. Things were looking up for New York here. Um, Very the... difficult to watch this tri-state matchup. As everybody knows, we are the owner players of the New York Mafia, soon to be renamed the something something. Um, but this one was tough. We did have the lead. We changed our playbook around. Unfortunately, it didn't all work out the way we would have liked. Uh, with Kaishan Williams coming in with the interception. And, uh, yeah, we tried to, you know, roll the dice a little different this time. And ultimately, uh, just bad outcomes occurred. But I would say overall, we did play a you know better game than kind of, Much better. of the, the lower score in ones that we had earlier in the season. Now, we don't lose because of a lack of effort. No. But like here, like that uh. was a great catch. Um, by Ryan Bandy, a rookie for New Jersey. Ryan fucking Bandy. Yeah. Then, fortunately, for the Mafia, this one getting intercepted by Evan Essence, a rookie for New Jersey. 
Bring me to life. Is that an Evanescence song? Was was that the Evanescence song? I don't really remember. Like, like, oh, wake yeah. up. <laughs> or is that something else? That might be Linkin Park. Might, that might be Linkin Park. I don't know. Uh, this one going to Ryan Bandy again. All right, Bandy. Save, save me, I wonder. Save me. Is that what? Yeah. What's it? Yeah, I guess that's the song. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we did have Ernesto Romero the third with uh, an interception mm-hmm. here, but the score had already kind of gone in the wrong direction for the Mafia. Um, they did manage somehow to kick a field goal that went through. Um, so we went up by three points, and then this led New Jersey to own in for another one, uh, going to Zachariah Branch, a rookie out of New Jersey. Oh, Not a lot a, to say here. There's our player on the ground. And New York then coming on with uh, rookie uh, running back Rashad Watson with a touchdown. And we demonstrated you know, aptitude across air and ground and yeah a lot to like probably our best game to date if we were playing any other team than the battalion i think we would have won yes. bring on the archers bring on the archers well you know spider web brought on the touchdown it took it uh far Star out of reach touchdown. and it scored 35 23 i'd like to say that the battalion played a good game but i'm still kind of salty well, it's any consolidation. Our last game of the evening goes to Pittsburgh and Charlotte. And we've got, let's see, Pittsburgh with the ball. They're throwing it. Wow. And this this one intercepted by Caitlin Montaigne, or maybe Montagna. Um, I believe Montana. she may have a quarterback as well as, uh, you know. That was the last play of the game that we just watched first. Really? Yes. But well, what happened on this play? All right. So in the first one that came out, we had... It's like uh, a postmodern, you know, movie where it's like you start with the ending. How yes. did Charlotte win? How did it come to this? Well, let's find out. Well, we had Seth Welch um, with the, you know, rookie Ooh. with a sack coming off. Seth Welch with the getting him at his grape juice helmet, too. Yeah. Actually, it was half a sack. Oh. Grape juice helmet? You always hate to lose half a sack. Then Pittsburgh, all tied up 6-6, coming in with a touchdown to Becking, who is a hot player, but respect the hustle. Then it was... Yeah, respect the hustle and don't, you know, say anything shitty, because once he figures out how to ace challenges, he might be coming off of after us. Let's go, bots. <laughs> and this one going to Vic Dotson from Charlotte with the touchdown. Can I just take a second to call out how well, how well the Mafia treat their bots? One of the best teams to be a bot in. So, remember that. We pay the our bots assignment. the most amount of money we can. We, I, right. we are a strong supporter of bot equity. Bot equity, baby. 16 to 20. And Pittsburgh with the ball. Shane Knox with the sack. Wow. That's how it rolled out to the Royals. 16-20. Montagna, taking, closing it out for him. Love to see a strong defensive performance, both the sack and the interception during crunch time. Crunch time to close this one out. And the Royals, looking real grapefruity with those helmets on. Grapefruity, exactly. So we had the eruption walk away. The Dragons win. Huntington Beach, St. Louis, New Jersey. The Mafia almost won. Almost won, and the Royals did win. Um, that led us to Stack's Team of the Week, so shout out to all these players here. And let's take a moment to review where we are in the standings in the Eastern Conference with um, three, everybody's got three games played, but we've got the Royals in first, and then the Roughnecks, followed by the Race, Typhoon, Battalion, and finally in last place are the Mafia, yet to register their first win, but certainly on the hunt. And still only three games behind first. Yes. Yeah, only three games behind first. When it comes to the Western Conference, we have the hunting, you know, the Beach Voyagers with three wins, St. Louis with two, Tacoma and Dallas all with two, 
um, Anchorage with one win, and then we also have the Rattlers that have uh, no wins this season as well. So maybe I got to see when the Rattlers face the Mafia. Yes, that'll be the the Super Bowl of the un simulated undefeated. Super- yes, of the un undefeated. Well, uh, uh, Rai, this was fun with you, and once again, this was. U.S. U.S. F.A.P.A. Let's, Let's go. go.